Jedi Survivor coming to last-gen consoles is nothing more than a cash grab, and the lack of accountability with how this game initially launched is nothing short of embarrassing. It released a high praise and critical acclaim from review outlets, but the truth is this game launched well before it was ready. You would think that after leaving behind the old-gen consoles that the console versions would have benefited from that, but no, the performance on console was terrible and basically unplayable, with rampant stutters, frame drops, and screen tearing plaguing the game, it took five months for them to get the game in a playable state. Meanwhile, the PC version of the game looks practically abandoned, as a well-deserved abysmal score on Steam shows what the users think about it. They haven't posted an update or a patch since January of this year, and the patches have done seemingly very little in the way of fixing the foundational problems. Well, all of that is hopefully about to change, with the arrival of the last-gen port to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Apparently, PC is going to receive some type of an update after nine months of nothing. And given the state of the game on PC, along with the fact that the next-gen console versions are still less than stellar, I can't see the last-gen ports as anything other than a cash grab. And the best way I can make my case is by walking through the history of this game and how it has been treated. Because at one level, the PC update may finally address some of the major issues, but it's taken over a year year and a half, and given my love for this game and the franchise, I can't be anything other than severely critical with how this game has been treated. This isn't some small fly-by-night studio or a tiny publisher. This is EA and Respawn, and this is Star Wars. I know Disney continues to treat Star Wars with a complete lack of respect and care, so hopefully the continued negative feedback they've received with how they've treated the property actually helps alter the course in the future, because if they're still planning on making the third Jedi game, they have a lot of goodwill and trust to earn back from where I sit. Now, every weekday here on Reforge Gaming, I tell you what I think about a gaming topic, and then we go to a live stream where I want to hear what you think. So, if you like this content, hit like and subscribe. The big question that everybody is asking about porting a game to last gen after seemingly leaving behind last gen is a very simple one. Why? Why do this after launching a next-gen only game? And oftentimes, simple questions have simple answers. And the answer is simply money. Even though the PS5 sales trajectories have put them on a path to surpass the PS4, it's no secret that a huge chunk of the players are still engaging on the PlayStation 4. And the same goes for Xbox, even though the Series X and Series S sales are in a floundering and falling position, a lot of Xbox users are still playing on their Xbox One consoles. And when you see that, despite all of the performance issues, the game actually still landed in the top 10 most sold games in North America for 2020. you can see where this is headed. No matter what the state of these ports, it will likely see good commercial return simply because it's Star Wars. And given the state of the game on the next-gen consoles, they're still sort of rough around the edges, I have zero confidence in the care that they took with making sure these old-gen ports run well. And given the game has now been on the PC for over a year and a half, with an embarrassing score and a lack of real updates and fixes, I just can't see this any other way. The only thing that is giving me a little bit of confidence or hope is that Jedi Fallen Order was on the previous gen console. So maybe all the performance issues came from them trying to push certain aspects graphically that they could just basically take out of the game to bring it to the last gen version. I do, however, think that we need to remember exactly how this game landed on the next gen consoles and what has happened since then. Early looks at the game in trailers, gameplay reveals, and previews certainly had some of us worried about graphics and performance, but largely, it looked like a big jump up from the previous game. And if you haven't played the game yet, I won't spoil any of the story elements, but the opening was quite good, and I was able to overlook some of the frame rate issues when I played the game initially. It wasn't until I got to Kobo that everything started falling apart. This planet was the worst offender, and some players simply pushed through in the story to get to the other locations where they reported it was slightly better but my experience on Kobo was so bad I simply stopped playing and I waited for an update the game was constantly snagging and hitching regardless of what I was doing I could be doing a simple spin test where I just sort of slowly spin the camera to look for frame stutters or I could be running into a new location it just didn't matter the game was all over the place 
and not just hitches that were sort of like system level snags it would drop frames experience horrendous stuttering and then it was some of the worst screen tearing i have ever seen in a console game so every time they pushed out a patch i would quickly boot up the game run back and forth spin the camera and i could immediately tell that nothing had been fixed and i did try the solutions that some had suggested on like reddit and twitter saying listen mess with the settings of the game or mess with your tv it didn't make a dent it it wasn't until almost five months after the game was out that they issued a patch where they claimed they had completely reworked the performance mode for console and to their credit it really seemed like they did virtually all of the stutters the drops the tears they were gone so I was off to the races I played through the entire game and thoroughly enjoyed it I will say there still were some issues there could be pop in there was minor screen tearing every once in a while and there were oddities in the cutscenes with like clothing and hair but overall it was a night and day difference versus when the game launched but when it comes to the PC version however I sadly cannot say the same The PC version of Jedi Survivor is currently sitting on Steam with only 50,000 reviews and an overall score of 67%. Now, if you compare this to the first game, Jedi Fallen Order, that has 126,000 reviews and a strong 88%. Needless to say, this drop in the score is embarrassing, but the clear difference in quantity of reviews showed that the first game outperformed the sequel in sales on Steam as well. If refunds were easily allowed on console as a form of consumer protection, I have to wonder if these types of shenanigans would stop for the larger games and publishers. It's easy to sell a buggy mess on console when Star Wars name can basically carry the game and nobody's going to be able to return it. It's a lot harder to do on PC as evidenced by the huge difference in the review quantity and the overall score between the two games. But the story about the PC version is far worse than just the score. Their last update was in January, and the patch was apparently labeled Patch 8, and it is largely just adding a feature or two, with a passing vague remark about how it fixed performance and stability across all platforms, which that could literally include some of the issues on the consoles since it said all platforms. So, it's now been almost eight months with nothing, and the announcement of the last-gen ports game came with an assurance that the PC will get an update. Insider Gaming published an article titled Star Wars Jedi Survivor coming to Xbox One and PlayStation 4 in September, and in that they report the following. Speaking of PC, EA also announced that, quote, enhancements to the game's technical performance controls and more, plus a variety of quality of life improvements, will be coming to that version of the game. And I'm going to be honest, if I'm a PC player who owns this game, I wouldn't hold my breath. This is just more generic, vague speech with a complete and total lack of ownership for how the game launched and how it currently sits on PC. But I will say this, the pattern of going quiet and doing no updates or patches and then suddenly doing one, that is what led to the console version seeing this huge and needed fix that it received. They virtually said nothing and all of a sudden they drop this big patch that could be what's going on with pc so hopefully for pc fans the eight months was enough to fix the fundamental issues with the game but i gotta say this all just leaves a very bad taste in my mouth I just keep coming back to how much of a shame this entire situation is. It seems like such an analogy to how the Star Wars content has been treated by Disney. The first game wasn't perfect, but from a Star Wars lore and storytelling aspect, it was as close to perfect as you could get. And to take that near-perfect launching pad and treat the sequel with such a disregard for quality, it's inexcusable. It's not just a great IP with a great story and great gameplay. You can tell that the devs really poured a lot into the characters and the story developments and the gameplay mechanics in the sequel. If, If you completely ignore all the performance and the quality issues, it isn't just a good sequel. I think it's a great sequel. It moves the story forward in a thought and creative way. It actually connects everything to Order 66 and Star Wars canon. Characters from the first game are brought in at different times in the sequel. They're given meaningful and impactful scenes with good dialogue and good voice acting. And 
They don't just limp to the finish line. The story has huge twists and turns, and it really is, I think, good enough at the end. It gives you both closure with some things that have happened, but it does have that classic open-ended feel that clearly more is to come. Jedi Survivor would have been one of my highest rated games of 2023, which just shows how frustrating the situation is. A great game mired in a lack of polish, and it came out, I would argue it came out almost a year before it was ready. It still isn't in a polished state. The five months that it took to get performance good on console, great, but it still didn't feel as if it was feature complete and launch ready. And the PC version going almost a year and a half without foundational game-breaking things getting fixed, that is not something that should be tolerated. There is only one place to lay blame in my mind. It's the same place where most of the woes of Star Wars belong. This is Disney's fault. They said they wanted a new Star Wars game every six months, and, well, they got it, kind of. And they made their money, sure, but in the process, much like the movies and the TV shows, they cared far more about cadence than quality. And the real worrying development is that once the game was in a playable state on console, the director left. The same director that did very weird interviews about how they could have taken more time, but he knew they didn't need it. I don't know why you would say that if you knew the game was in the state that it was. Now, that could be early signs of trouble, since the main actor has confirmed the next game has been greenlit. Well, Disney could have been once again pushing for an unrealistic schedule that will end up hurting the game in the process, and the director said, I'm out. I don't want to do this again because it was likely frustrating seeing the game come to market in the way that it did. So for now, my advice to gamers everywhere is do not buy this game on old gen. I really would wait for reviews and performance breakdowns because if the way this game was treated on the next gen consoles and pc is any indication it will be a joke and just another cash grab but those are just my thoughts now it's time to hear your thoughts and you can do that in a comment below or come to the live stream it'll hit a card right here at the end of the video it'll also be in a pinned comment below and if you like this content and you want more like it don't forget to like share and subscribe